we still have quite a bit of time here. I want to take you through uh, starting out with roles and responsibilities uh, from the state's perspective, roles and responsibilities of the state versus local governments versus this entity in between called the Metropolitan Planning Organization. And then I want to talk about a little bit about the problem that we're facing uh, and then go into our statewide transportation plan, not into detail, but to get to the point of relevant components of that draft plan that, are, that pertain to the subject today. Uh, and then, uh, if we have time, uh, talk about our road transfer program. And then lastly, the um, uh, 2015 legislative session and some of the legislation that's been filed, which deals with the funding issue, and I think you'll, you'll find that interesting if we have time to get that far. So let me just start out with um, talking about roles and responsibilities, and this again is from the state's perspective. Uh, others, uh, levels of government may have a different perspective, but we look at the state's role in transportation as being a threefold role. One is we need to connect up with the rest of the country and the rest of the world. And you say, well, we don't have any international border crossings here. We have international ports here, big ones. And so we're connected to the rest of the world through our port system. Uh, New Orleans, from time to time, has at least one international flight, but not, there's, it's not really much of an international airport. But we do connect with the, with, uh, uh, through our ports with the rest of the world, and we're certainly well connected with the rest of the country, and we need to do that for our economy to thrive. Um, secondly, we need to provide for the movement of goods, freight, uh, people, and services between and through the urban areas. So we need to connect the cities together. Uh, and lastly, our third uh, role is to maintain a basic farm to market network in rural areas of Louisiana. And that's a traditional state role. Uh, rural areas do not have uh, the population or the tax base that's needed to maintain a, a road network. Uh, and so the state uh, uh, steps in and maintains that network. And that, you know, I, in debates that I've had with urban interests about subsidizing rural areas, I remind them, you better remember where your food comes from and where your building materials come from and where your minerals come from. Um, so in addition to that, what we do then is we want to assist local governments uh, in addressing local transportation needs. And, and how do we do that? We administer programs, and you'll see a number of them listed there, off-system bridge, uh, transportation enhancements, which is now transportation alternatives. They've changed the name of it. Uh, in urban areas, they get a certain amount of federal funding, and we we're involved in that, helping the metropolitan planning organizations utilize those funds. We have an airport program, a port program. We do some work in urban transit. Uh, we administer federal funds in rural transit. We're hoping to have some state funding in that eventually. Uh, we provide advice and training through our Louisiana Technical Assistance Program. Uh, we provide planning assistance in metropolitan areas and on a pilot basis in, in non-metropolitan areas. Uh, state money goes into what's called the Parish Transportation Fund, which gives some of the gas tax money to the parishes. And uh, we're more than a transportation department. We also have a flood control program which can be of assistance to local governments and help lower people's flood insurance rates. And, uh, and we do some public work support. We support engineering-wise some, uh, some of the levy districts around the state. So we have our primary role. Beyond that, we want to assist local governments. And I want to clear something up here with people because there's a lot of misunderstanding. We've had a lot of discussions about economic development in DOTD and what it is and what it is not. And uh, there's three things that people call economic development. And we're looking at it from, as state officials, the state of Louisiana as a whole, there's true economic development for the state, and that is any project uh, that results in net increases in employment or income for state residents. Secondly, there's real estate development, which is not economic development from the state's perspective. And that is generally shifting growth in population, either existing population or the growth in population or retail sales from 
one area of Louisiana to another area of Louisiana. Now from a local government perspective, a mayor or a parish president, if I can get this retailer to move from this area into my area, that's economic development for me because I get the sales tax revenues from it. And, and you know, if so if, I, if Walmart is looking around for another place to locate and I can get them to locate in my area, then that's economic development for me. Even though the retail sales that I get are going to be largely come from other retailers in that same area. It's not really a growth of anything. It's simply a relocation of retail sales from adjacent areas into my area. But from the state's perspective, we, we try to stay out of that because that is not economic development for the state. And uh, in discussing it with local officials, I've often posed this to them, uh, how would you like it if the state of Louisiana extracted money from residents, your constituents, using the power of government through taxation, I'm taking money from your constituents by force, and I'm going to use that money to help your neighbor, the adjacent parish or the adjacent city, develop retail, which is going to then drain retail sales from your area. How would you like if I did that? And so that is why we don't want to be involved in that. There's competition. Now, if we can get something from Texas or Mississippi or Arkansas, we're going to go after it. But it is not our job to get involved in moving things from one area of Louisiana to another. And when we do our economic analyses, we, we, we use a model called Regional Economic Models Incorporated, the REMI model. We have what's called a one area model. And it's the state of Louisiana as a whole, because that's all we're interested in. We could get a sub-regional model that went down to the parish level, but we do not want to pit one area of Louisiana against another in our economic analyses, so we don't do that. We simply look at the state as a whole. The last thing that people uh, refer to as economic development, and these are very sincere and well-meaning people, but they come from areas that are economically stagnant or in economic decline, and oftentimes they latch on to very expensive infrastructure projects in the hopes, mostly airport, uh, mostly um, highways, four-lane highways, and sometimes airports and things like that, in the hopes that that major infrastructure project is somehow going to serve as a catalyst for economic growth and that it'll somehow turn the situation around. And uh, what I think the research shows clearly about infrastructure is in and of itself, it does not create economic development. It is simply a necessary ingredient for economic development. So I just want to clear that up um, because you hear that term thrown around a lot. And uh, so we have to look at it you know, from the state's perspective. Um, <clears throat> local responsibilities, we believe, are to manage growth. And we would like local governments to develop some kind of a, a long-range plan, some kind of a 20-year vision. What do they want for their area? And then set some goals to achieve that that, uh, that vision. Do you want to preserve the character, if you're at a parish level, do you want to preserve the character of your towns? Uh, define and develop city centers and downtowns. Um, do you want some ar ar architectural themes or standards or in this particular zone you have to have this particular architectural standard? We're going to have a committee that's going to make a determination as to what you can move forward with. Uh, where are you placing your schools and other public facilities? Um, I will say that uh, in, uh, we, we provide assistance for planning in a number of areas, and uh, we, we do that generally through consultants. And one of our consultants uh, got a contract to do planning in a particular area, and I won't say which one. And there was a number of, number of municipalities in that area, and so I asked him, I said, look, when you go over and talk to Mayor so-and-so, Ask him this question. If somebody were to come to you, Mayor, and say, take me to town X, his town, where would he take them? Would he take them to the edge of, uh, edge of town where the sign is that says entering town of whatever? Or would he take them to the post office? Where, where would he take them? And I saw him later, and I asked him, I said, did you ask the mayor that question? He said, yes, I did. And I said, well, what was his response? And he, he said, well, he said, that's a good question. 
So he didn't, he didn't, hadn't even really thought about that. They had, this town has no downtown that I can define. So I was just wondering what his thoughts were about, you know, if you, if you, if you, if somebody asks you, take me, show me your city, take me to your, where, where would you take them? You know, do you have any central focal point or what have you? But apparently they did not in that case. And on schools, um, I will make a couple comments on that. It, it just amazes me around the state how many people, um, how many school boards, oftentimes operating independently from local governments, where local government has no control, it's an independent school board, decides to build schools on high-speed highways. And then, lo and behold, they're shocked that the, the safety of the children is now in jeopardy. And of course, what do they do? They call DOTD and want us to come fix it for them. You know, they don't ask our advice about placing the school there. They go ahead and build it, and we don't have any control over them getting a building permit. They go ahead and build it, and they're building a school, an elementary school, on a highway with a 65 mile per hour speed limit and a lot of truck traffic, and then they're just shocked that there's a safety issue now at, at that school, and the parents are concerned about their children. And so, you know, <laughs> it, uh, it's, uh, it's very difficult to um, deal with those kind of issues and with people that uh, have any more common sense than that, but uh, that's what we're oftentimes facing. So we would like local governments to uh, plan ahead for this, and if they have a school board that operates independently, bring them into the planning process as well. Um, once they've got goals that achieve their vision, then they need some kind of a land use plan that complements those goals. And then they need mechanisms to implement that plan. And if zoning is a, is a great way to do it, but that's a four letter word in a lot of areas of Louisiana. And uh, so maybe you can use some kind of tax incentives to get people to, to develop in accordance with your land use plan. Uh, but then they need to consider things like uh, development codes and sign ordinances. Uh, we would like them to invest in infrastructure, develop some kind of an infrastructure plan. Um, more so, more than just roadways. They need a water and sewer plan and things like that. Uh, they have a right to protect their local infrastructure. Uh, they can have their own weight enforcement if they want to. Um, you can equip sheriffs, deputies, and local police departments with portable scales, and they can enforce weights if they have rogue trucking companies that are tearing up their local in infrastructure. They certainly have a right to do something about that. We would like them to improve their local roads, build new roads to develop a grid, uh, there are a number of locations in Louisiana where there is the state highway and everything is developed along that state highway and it all dumps out on the state highway. There's no interconnectivity between any of the neighborhoods or any of the development along there. So everybody has to pour out on the main highway simply to go uh, a few blocks down the roadway. Um, we would like people to think about transit serving the elderly. We have an aging population in the state, as does the country as a whole. Uh, our demographic, demographic forecast for the year 2040 show that the number of people 65 and older is going to double. So is the number 75 and older. I'm going to be one of them, if I'm still around, that is. But uh, uh, so we need to be thinking about that. And then what about the people who need to come into the workforce? in workforce development who don't have transportation now and need some basic way to get to job training and then to get to their to a job. Think about walking and biking and then what about other modes of transportation? Do you have an airport? Is a railroad? Do you have a railhead in your area? And uh, what's the access look like to that? And do you have a port in your area? And, and how do the trucks get in and out of that port? Uh, and then uh, holding developers accountable and requiring mitigation of impacts. We have a traffic impact policy for state highways. We require developers to mitigate traffic impacts. And a number of uh, local governments do that. Uh, they assess impact fees. We don't, we don't assess fees. We require physical improvements. Other 
entities will actually charge a fee and they'll just collect that and save that up and then they'll make the infrastructure improvements uh, when, they see, when they think the time is right. Uh, we want local governments to manage access to improve safety and, and efficiency, require interconnection of parking lots. Uh, if you've ever been to, uh, I'm sure everybody has, different strip development and you may have to get in your car and drive to the place next door. Whereas if the parking lots were interconnected, I would never have to get back out on the main road. I could just drive next door and you say, well, Eric, why don't you just walk? Well, it depends on what you're buying and how, hard, how far you're gonna have to carry it, whether you can do that or not. Uh, don't allow driveways too close to intersections. That's a big no-no. It -no. causes a lot of operational and uh, safety issues when that, uh, when that happens. And then um, more driveways did not necessarily mean more business, although a lot of um, commercial interests believe that it does, and we need to limit the number of driveways that we have. Uh, and then consider the future. What about building setbacks? If my plan is I'm gonna turn this road into a boulevard, why on earth would I give a building permit to somebody to put a permanent structure in what I know is gonna be the footprint of my boulevard? Why would I do that? So that's just, it's just co some common sense things that, that local governments can do which will help manage the growth of that area. Well, what about metropolitan planning organizations? Um, an MPO is, is, and this is a, the federal definition, is the Forum for Cooperative Transportation Decision Making for the Metropolitan Planning Area. And each urban area that ha as defined by the Bureau of the Census that has more than 50,000 population is required to have a metropolitan planning organization. And it has to have at least 75% of the affected population, including the central city. You can't ex exclude the central city, so you can't have a donut with the central city missing. The central city has to be part of it. Uh, Louisiana has 11 MPOs. Our most recent one is uh, Hammond Ponchatoula. That came out in the 2010 census. So we're up to 11 now, a lot of them in southeastern Louisiana. Um, so what, um, what is a metropolitan planning organization? It, it's, re it's really comprised of a technical staff, a permanent staff that keeps the MPO running. Uh, they generally have at least one technical advisory committee and that's generally made up of uh, transportation uh, technocrats from the municipalities and the parishes that make up that urban area. There's generally somebody from each one of those entities that serves on that. And then they have a policy committee which is the elected officials from those municipalities and parishes and that's really the decision making body that, that uh, the policy committee. Uh, it really decides what projects are gonna be done, et cetera. And they're the ultimate decision makers. Generally, they go along with what the people on the uh, technical advisory committee recommend, but not always. And so what is their responsibilities? Well, their responsibility is really to provide a forum for discussion of regional transportation issues um, and, and try to, to form some kind of a consensus for a, for a vision for that metropolitan area and then develop some goals to achieve that vision, um, and then develop a plan based on the vision and goals. And they also oftentimes provide a lot of advice and technical data and analyses and information to help local governments in their planning efforts. Uh, we would like uh, MPOs to coordinate local land use and transportation plans uh, uh, among the, the different jurisdictions within that urban area and their, their, their local transportation plans, coordinate those and coordinate those with the Metropolitan Transportation Plan. Uh, and then their responsibility, one of the primary responsibilities is to administer an open and transparent uh, decision-making process in allocating the federal funds that are provided to that particular metropolitan area. What projects are you going to do and when are you going to do them? Uh, we would also like them to work with the elected officials in that area to come up with um, regional priorities when they go to 
uh, the state capitol in Baton Rouge or to Washington seeking special funding for uh, transportation infrastructure. So that if, they're, if they're united, they'll be more successful. If each one goes individually, they will not, probably be less successful. So, so the problem that we're having and one of the reasons why we wanted the research performed was that local government controls land use and the state has no authority in that area. And so uh, if there is no management or poor management of growth, then we wind up with congestion and safety issues. And there's issues with other infrastructure too, overloaded sewer systems, uh, drainage systems that are uh, inadequate. So you get localized flooding, et cetera. Uh, and a lot of those negative impacts uh, occur on the state highway system and then local governments come to DOTD and they want us to use money that was taken from taxpayers all across Louisiana to come fix that problem. And you know, so why did you let this problem happen? Well, blah, 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 blah. But you know, the problem's there and they want us to fix it. 